Hello everybody, this is Chris Mackey and this is your 20th tutorial on, on uh, Honeybee Energy and we're, wow, we're getting pretty far up there in our, our number of tutorials for this. Um, but the focus of this one and actually the focus of the next three videos in this series is going to be on schedules in, uh, in energy simulation. And, and, if, uh, and if you guys aren't aware of schedules, if you're just coming in in the series in this point, I mean schedules are essentially are the things that tell you when people are in the space and when the lights are on when the windows are open, all these things are controlled by schedules in, in Energy Plus. And, uh, and if you were around here for the last video, you'll remember that we, you know, we have, well, we have a fairly large energy model here. And I'm going to tell you guys, yeah, if you're getting into the series now, don't worry about all of this. I mean, we, we've been setting up a lot of, like, customized zones and everything for my, my family's house here. But the key thing that you need to realize if you're, if you're jumping in or, you know, if you saw the last one is that we, we took these zones which are, you know, our, our B reps of, um, you know, with all the properties of energy simulation in the last video. And we changed the loads to reflect sort of, you know, the, you know, the lighting density that I think my parents would have in their house. I mean, if they switch to LEDs, I'm, which I'm trying to make them do. Uh, or like the number of people, you know, per, per unit of floor area and stuff like that. And now, but now, like the, what actually sets these loads, it's a combination of, of the numbers we input here, um, and, and that you see here, output of here, and a schedule that will assign, you know, that will basically say, assign the full amount of lighting load, you know, in this hour, or, you know, turn all the lights off in this hour because everyone's asleep or everyone's not in the house or something. So, all right, so that's, that's what we're going to get into this in this one. And specifically, we're just going to work with finding out what schedules are applied to our zones and, uh, and what... Um, and, and specifically, and just visualizing those schedules and understanding what they are. So, all right, so we can start off by, well, all right, so there are two ways to try and get access to, uh, to the, the, the schedules that are assigned to your honeybee zones here. Because, I mean, if you remember all the way back in the, in the first part, like when we turned them into zones, there were schedules that were automatically assigned. And actually, and they were assigned based on this program that we chose for our zones. Um, and so, because you can imagine that, you know, between, between all the options of building programs, Programs and zone programs that sort of go underneath those, uh, you know, that they're, you know, an uh, uh, office would have a very different schedule for when people are in the space than, than an apartment because, you know, people work in the middle of the day in an office, but they come home to the apartment and, you know, and so you, you can imagine that those two schedules would kind of be somewhat inverses of each other. So, I mean, so each, each program sort of has its own set of schedules and that's what we're going to visualize right now. And uh, and all right, and to to sort of start us off at at uh, you know at the very beginning, I'm just I'm actually going to copy our whole sort of set of components that allow us to pick out uh, building programs. Um, and then zone programs beyond that. If you guys remember from the first few videos, you have things. I mean, you can select all these different ones, but we're going to do mid-rise apartment because that's probably the closest one to my, my parents' house that we're simulating here. And, you know, and we have different different programs under that, but we're just going to pick the normal apartment in, in the mid-rise apartment instead of the corridor. So, all right, so we can use this, this um, you know, if I have a panel here, this, this zone program that comes out of here, this mid-rise apartment apartment, and we can use a component that's under this whole, well, first off, actually, I should have introduced, this is a whole tab that's meant for, you know, working with schedules and for calling certain schedules from the full library in Open Studio and sort of, you know, it's, you know, turning set schedules into values and making your own schedules. That's all, that all happens in this component, in this tab right here. So, all right, so we're going to start off by using this, um, it's, it's uh, Honeybee Get Energy Plus Schedules. And if you guys drag and drop that onto our canvas, it looks like a little blue blue clock with an E plus and stuff. And you see that it will take that zone program, you know, this mid-rise apartment apartment, and it will, if we connect it up to here, it will actually spit out what the names of the schedules are for, for occupancy, for activity. And these are all names that are referring to schedules that are kept in the vast Open Studio library of schedules. And I mean, and, well, all right, well, you guys won't probably have to look through the Honeybee Schedule library that often, but just to show you guys all that is available, there's a Honeybee Call from EP Schedule library that works in, in the exact same way if you guys remember we did for constructions. We, you know, called from an EP construction library. There's the same type of component for calling schedules from the library. And just to show you all the possible schedules that uh, that at Open Studio comes with, um, 
you know, there's, okay, there's an always on schedule, there's an on summer default, but then most, most of these are just default schedules for, you know, full service restaurant for all those different programs, for the hospital, for large office hotels. So most of the time you won't really have to deal with, I mean, especially if you're an early design, you won't have to deal with the full schedule library. Um, because, you know, once you assign that zone program, you know, that's as good of a guess as any as when do people are going to be in the space uh, and, and otherwise. But I mean, but at a certain point, you know, you get a little bit further in the design, you want to check, okay, what exactly is this schedule that, that, you know, that is being assigned based on this program? And, you know, and that's why, well, all right, I'll move this off down here, but we're not going to work with that anymore. But that, that's why now we have this component that sort of takes that zone program and spits out all of the different schedules for lighting, for when people are there, um, and for when the heating set point is on, etc. Um, so the thing is, so any of these schedules, I mean, well, I mean, well, okay, of course I should say that just the name of the schedule really isn't too, too helpful to us. So, I mean, really what we want to know is we want to see actually like what the schedules are telling us. Like what is the heating set point exactly, you know, and, and what, what is it going to and from? And for that, there's a decomposed energy plus schedule. Just like if you guys remember, there's a decomposed construction and decomposed material. There's one for schedules. So if you guys drag and drop this onto your canvas, You'll notice that you can plug in any of these schedules. Like, I mean, you can plug in the occupancy schedule, and it will get, to, you know, spit out the name of the schedule, which, you know, well, we kind of put in there in the first place, so maybe that's not as helpful. But we get the, the schedule itself, which, I mean, tends to be in a kind of esoteric type language. Um, so, I mean, well, and the, well, actually, yeah, let's look at the occupancy schedule itself. But, I mean, the thing is, really all it's telling you is that the schedule goes from January 1st to, to December 31st, and, uh, and, you know, and then there are some comments just like the, the materials where, you know, well, let's see, where, you know, it's basically saying start month, end month, you know. So, I mean, so this necessarily isn't really telling us all that much because almost all the schedules are, are pretty much just like this. I mean, you could see maybe it's important. It tells you the type of schedule. So, like, a, a fraction schedule is one where, you know, where you're essentially multiplying this, this value of 3 watts per square meter by a fraction for each hour, depending on whether the schedule says there are lights or not. So, all right, so this isn't necessarily telling us too much, except that, you know, the schedule is either fractional or, you know, in this case, it's a temperature value, uh, you know, for, for the creating and cooling set point. So, all right, so maybe that's not, not as helpful. So, so we'll, we'll kind of leave that off to the side now. But what is really helpful, I mean, is if we could take one of these schedules and can just convert them into a stream of numbers. The stream of numbers that just, you know, for like 8,760 hours of the year, we just get a value for that schedule. And the thing is, I mean, so Energy Plus stores the schedules kind of in this format, and it does that, you know, I mean, it, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a small file size, so it does that, you know, to kind of keep the schedule small. But uh, the way that I'd recommend, I'm going to just delete this now, because I mean, I would really recommend that you guys instead look at schedules using this Honeybee Convert Energy Plus Schedule to Values. And so if you guys drag and drop this component onto the canvas, you can plug in any schedule name. So let's plug in the occupancy schedule. Um, and you'll see that what pops out of this is, I mean, it should be something that actually should be very familiar to you if you've used uh, Ladybug or Honeybee in the past. It's, it's a, you know, it's a stream of 8,760 values, you know, that are, that are that, those fractional values that are being multiplied by the occupancy that, you know, that we saw over here, the, the number of people per, per area, per floor area in the, in the previous video. And so, and the beauty thing about, beautiful thing about this, I mean, we get a header on it that tells us everything. So, you know, we could actually just take this schedule and use it with any of the existing ladybug components, any of the, like the visualized data components, we can, we can plug these into there. So let's do that right now with the 3D chart. Um, and you know, so I'm going to drag and drop a ladybug 3D chart component that you probably you guys are pretty familiar with if you've been working with ladybug for a while. And, uh, and let's see, I'm going to put some of my preferences on here because I, I kind of like to scale the, uh, the X by uh, 0.25. Uh, let's see. And I like to drop the Z scale all the way to zero. Um, because, you know, there, there are colors that come here and I tend to think that that's maybe, you know, a little bit better than the Z scale of it. Uh, all right, yeah, and then, and then, so then let's just plug in the values for the input data. And then within a few seconds you should see in your Rhino scene, it'll, it'll produce a 3D chart of these values. 
so that you can really get a sense of actually of, of what the occupancy is is being set in uh, you know what it's being set to in this in this uh, in this energy model, uh, and I'm gonna go I'm gonna go into top view because I think it's gonna be a bit easier. And so you can see there's a you know we now we get a 3D chart that is telling us when the space is occupied. So the space is being fully occupied by you know by looks like 9 p.m. Like there's a that's full occupancy and it stays that way all the way until it looks like 6:30. But then the schedule is saying, oh, I guess I guess this is assuming that my parents are early risers, so you know they'll get up at 6:30. And well, I guess that's probably true. Actually, my dad is usually out, you know, within within a few hours. And I guess yeah, and then probably like an hour later, yeah, my mom is out. So yeah, so I mean this is probably pretty true. And in the middle of the day, it's you know it's down to well, okay, interesting. So it only goes down to 0.25. Uh, so I mean I don't know in the middle of the day. Well, I guess I don't know. Maybe that's actually a good enough approximation because my mom will be kind of in and out of the house sometimes in the middle of the day but I mean the point is that you guys can see you can visualize these schedules now and I can really get a sense of, of you know of what they are over the whole year um, and so we can do similar things for like the lighting we can see when that's turned on we can convert that over to values and visualize that on the 3d chart I mean you can even do crazy things you can like color suns with the amount of people in your space or the you know with the amount of lighting I mean I don't know some of these things you probably wouldn't necessarily want to do so much um, but you can see oh, okay interesting the lighting schedule is interesting so some the lights are partially turned on in the morning but they really get turned on I mean I guess this is probably pretty right you know around when, when electrical peak electrical demand happens like shortly after sunset uh, but interestingly though I mean it's not you know it's always starting at like 6 p.m. and it you know it doesn't really account for the fact that uh, that you know that the Sun is setting earlier in the winter than in the summer so so I mean so that's something that maybe we're gonna want to change and I'll show you guys that in a later video but really the whole point of this video was just to kind of show you guys that you can you can, uh, you know, find out what these schedules are and visualize them. Maybe I'll just show you. So, I mean, I, I would suggest this method for, you know, for a given zone program. This is a pretty good way to visualize them. But the other method, if you have a specific set of honeybee zones and you want to see specifically what schedules are applied to them, there is a, a component that is, again, under, well, it's actually under this 8 tab here. Um, and this is actually, this is what we're going to use later in a few videos later to actually change the, well, uh, actually, it's probably next video. We're just going to use it to change the, uh, the schedule. So there's a, a honeybee set energy plus zone schedules and if you drag and drop that onto the canvas uh, you'll see that you know it's just like the, uh, the the loads component that we were working with where we'll plug in some honeybee zones to it and you see that you get the uh, the you know the possibility of changing the occupancy and, and all these different uh, schedules uh, to something that you'd want um, and I'll show you okay in the next video I'll show you exactly how to change that but once this finishes doing that I just want to show you that Another way that you can get the schedules that are assigned to these these uh, these zones is to look here and see you know I'm going to move this kind of over to the side this what we're using to visualize the house right now um, but yeah but so you guys can see exactly what the specific schedules are that are being applied to the zones but you know right now we know that they're the same you know these these should match pretty much this uh, because they're you know they're 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 this you know the, right now they're being assigned based on that zone program at the start. So, all right, guys, so that's, that's all I really want to show you in this video, that you have the ability to visualize schedules um, and call, you know, look through all the schedules in this big library. Um, but uh, in the next one, we'll actually make our own schedules and apply them to, to the, this house. Maybe we'll, you know, we'll make something that's, that's a bit more indicative of when my parents are in the house. Um, or, yeah, or maybe I'll actually even show you how to set maybe a natural ventilation schedule. Because, yeah, there are really a lot of creative things you can do when you can make your own schedules. So, all right, guys, thank you for watching this one, and I'll see you in the next one.